Hey everyone, in recent times I've made a video number 104 that looked at some different ways to present GPS data by comparing it to reference points such as match data, um, position specific data and so on. I've had a few questions, one very recently, but uh, a specific question which relates to maximum speed and trying to find ways to identify what someone's overall max speed is and how close they're getting to it in different training sessions. I know there's a bit of talk around that with regard to injury prevention. So uh, I have used the same file, made a few little adjustments to some of the data to make it uh, suit my purposes, and I have created a sheet here called Max Speed. First question is, we want to be able to find out from the entire database, so in the database sheet, we want to find out what someone's max velocity has been across the entire database. So that's pretty easy. If you're on a relatively new version of Excel, there is a function called max if, and it allows you to put criteria in place to determine a max. And so you can do lots of criteria, but in this case, we only have one. So I'm just going to start typing, and you can see max is the first one that appears, but there's also max ifs. Now what it's asking for is the max range. So I always prefix my tables with TBL, which makes it really easy. I haven't looked at this file for a year, but I know that um, that is the name of my data set. Max velocity is one of my fields. And we now just simply have to repeat that process to put in the criteria range. which is simply play a name. My formula um, has gone across the column to my left, so I can't just click on it. I could either type A8, like so, and you can see the blue highlights, or I could click on a cell underneath and just arrow key it up. Either way, I want to end up with A8 in that cell, and I click enter, double click and send it down, and there we have overall max velocity for a given athlete inside that 12 months of data. I tend not to use max ifs, no reason, um, other than that I've always been a bit nervous using functions that may not work on someone's computer if I need to send it to them. and the alternative is to use aggregate, which I believe is uh, uh, one of the best functions that Excel has, partly because it can do so many different things. You can see all the different functions. Max is number four, but that's not the one we want because that cannot handle a large array of data. What we want is large. When we hit comma and ask us another question, just choose option 6 there, and which ignores errors. Now we have to put in what we want the maximum of, so we've been through this just a second ago. We want to go to the GPS column of max velocity. And the way aggregate works is that you divide by any of your criteria. So that criteria is just as it was before, where player name equals this value here, and we want the highest velocity. So that's a one. If we wanted the second highest velocity, it would be two. So if I double click and send that down, they should all be the same value as in column B, just calculated in a different way. Like I mentioned, I prefer aggregate but um, they're all giving us the same answer. But now something that's slightly more complex, and that is to identify when that max velocity occurred. The formula that I want to use is aggregate again. So I'm going to start off aggregate, and as we go, we can talk about what's going on. Once again, we, once again, we want large and we want to ignore errors. Now the answer that we're looking to extract 
is a date. And because Excel sees dates as numbers, we can use this function um, in the same way as we did in column C. We're just looking for the maximum. And so let's select the table. And we select date. So that is what we're looking to find the maximum of. And we now divide by our criteria. So I'll put a divide by sign. I open up the brackets and I put my first criteria in. First criteria is that the name equals column A. Multiply by a different criteria. We've got a second criteria. We want to find the most recent time that they achieved that velocity. So the max velocity, you could pick um, column B or column C for this. Close brackets. Because we've got two criteria, I need to enclose the whole lot in a set of brackets. So I'm just doing a double bracket at the end of that and a double bracket back here after the divided by sign. If you had a third criteria, fourth, fifth and sixth, it would be the same thing. Each criteria is inside a set of brackets and there's just a master set of brackets around the whole lot. So we've finished our formula and I hit enter and it is giving us a date. And so what we can go in and do is check on these dates, these athletes achieved that velocity. And that gives you a little bit of confidence that your process is working. But if you just think about that formula, it's saying, find us the largest date where the name equals A8 and the velocity equals C8. So the logic's pretty clear once you think about it. It's a very clever formula that is doing that. So now uh, we get to the actual question. The actual question that I've had uh, very recently, but um, a few times previously as well, is that we want to find out what 90% or 85% or some value, some uh, derivation of that max velocity is, and then find out uh, when was the last time they achieved that. You're not always reaching peak velocity in training sessions, but you might be deciding that you need to do it once a week or you need to get close to max velocity every 10 days or something like that as a way to get stress through the hamstrings. So, to do the easy bit first, let's multiply our max velocity by a value. Now what would be a cool thing to do would be to have it be dynamic, but let's just keep it simple for now. I multiply it by 0.9, I can send that down. If we look at the database sheet, we can see that it's a really old set of data. It's 2017, so um, that was just what I created in the past and used again. So what you might do in, um, with a live data set is have something like this. Have a formula that tells you today's date, and then you can just do today minus 28 to say how many times in the last 28 days or the last 10 days or whatever you want have has this athlete got above 90% of their max velocity but to make the data set work I'm going to use these two dates here and you can apply that same concept to um, your own circumstance as you need to so relatively easy formula to be honest it is a count ifs function and so a countifs function just has a criteria range and then a criteria and you repeat that as many times as you need to uh, depending on how many criteria you have. So we've got first criteria, player name equals that. Next criteria is Max velocity. And what is our criteria? Our max velocity times 0.9. So if I just close that off now and hit enter, 
it's telling us 147 and that's from the entire data set so that's not what we're looking for but you can see that uh, that formula works pretty pretty comfortably what we really just need to do is add some extra criteria so that it meets um, the purposes that we're trying to build this thing so firstly we need to have it be greater than or equal to this first date and let's just repeat that again the second date and the reason I'm doing F4 is because we want to lock it on those two cells up at the top now if I hit enter and copy that down we can see that um, we've set it up correctly now I, I rigged up this particular athlete here, Dave, to only have one instance of velocity above threshold, just to check that my formula works. So that one sticks out a little bit compared to some of the others. And we can just repeat the formula that we used in column D to find the last time they went above that percentage. So save a bit of effort, I'm going to copy and paste and let's see what sort of edits we need to make. So if we're looking at the formula it's finding the largest date where the name equals Andy Johnson and the max velocity equals C8. So that's the only thing that we need to change, I can drag this across to here, change the equals sign to greater than or equal to and leave it as one. Double click, send it down and it's worked. Now like I said this data set was created for a different purpose but this athlete here I specifically set up to not have reached the velocity other than on the 11th of the 5th 2017. So let's go and have a look at that and see that um, his max velocity for that session was greater than 26.64. On the 11th of the 5th, you can see that he reached 29.2 and that in fact meets our criteria because the threshold was 26.6. Uh, so if I just wanted to change a date to see if we got that correct, let's go down to the 24th of the 6th and change this 25.2 here to 30.0 so that should be the 24th and the 6th let's see what happens in our calculations so two things happen one of them is that his max velocity updates second thing that happens is that the max times 9 increases as well and the date updates to the 24th of the 6th, so that works great. In my experiences, um, these tools become more and more effective the longer you have them, so if you did have a system in place and you had collected data over more than one season, you probably wouldn't want to look at last year's max velocity, and you'd want to likely keep it restricted to the current season or the current period of time, so uh, these columns I and J are just um, illustrating that the formula is not that much different both the max ifs and the aggregate function are the same they just have a couple of extra criteria to allow um, those date ranges to be included there so uh, just in case that was your circumstance I just put those formula in there um, and they're done exactly the same way as we have already so now you could feed this information back into a dashboard so if you had a report you might want to identify that uh, it has been uh, a certain number of days since they achieved 90% uh, of max or you might look at something like this the number of times that they had achieved a percentage of max you also might look to uh, make this dynamic and so for example if I put 95% as my measure up in cell G4 I could instead leverage this
and have this calculation be dynamic. Just a quick update to an old video. Uh, appreciate you watching. Um, stay safe.